Hello, this is Grandmaster Maxim Blugi with a DVD on how to play the Karo Khan. Now, to begin with, the Karo Khan is a very temperate choice for black. It's designed to first equalize and then seize the initiative as white has high ambitions and oversteps his boundaries. World champions Botvinnik, Smyslov, Petrosian, and Karpov made it a formidable weapon in their careers, winning dozens of games each in uh, uh, finding methods of um, making use of their opponent's high ambitions. And it's an opening where you will not have to be in uh, a nervous uh, breakdown situation, trying to find uh, if your next move is going to subject your king to a, an unbearable attack uh, as you're launching an attack of your own, um, for example, as in a Sicilian or in a perk defense. So, um, let me start by looking at some games of mine. Uh, let's start with the game that I played against Alexander Morozevich and explaining some of the key ideas and uh, some of the key lines against the Karo Khan. In this game, uh, after e4, c6, d4, d5, the starting lineup of the Karo Khan, Morozevich decides to play the advanced variation, which is uh, starting with the move e5. Now, the idea of the move e5 is to take control of uh, space with this pawn on e5, while uh, also trying to launch an attack on the king side at some point. The pawn on e5 will show the way that the attack is going to be held. Black, on the other hand, uh, is immediately able to solve the problem of his light squared bishop, which is a big issue in many uh, one e4 openings and uh, so this balance between the space advantage and the uh, allowance of this bishop to roam free freely is basically what makes the advanced variation so complicated that it is still being employed as the major weapon against the Karakan for white and of course it's a major weapon against white by players who know how to play in a feisty fashion as black let's take a look at this game and see what happens. So now, uh, Morozevich played knight f3. Um, now, this move has been popularized, and the whole idea behind it has been popularized by Nigel Short in his uh, semifinal world championship match against Anatoly Karpov. And Nigel, as we shall see uh, as we look further in this, into this game, has shown that uh, this, in fact, is quite an interesting and venomous setup against black's forces. Uh, previously to that, the move knight f3 was never considered as a big threat uh, for uh, black, but after that match, that all changed. Let's see what was considered a major threat. Uh, let's go back one move and see how uh, very active players such as Alexei Shirov treated the Karo Khan uh, and the advanced version of the Karo Khan prior to Nigel Short's idea that began with knight f3. Uh, in the, before that era, white used to play knight c3, and still you will see a number of games starting with knight c3. After knight c3, black plays e6, although there are some people that play h5. For example, I've played h5 uh, once against Shirov himself and uh, managed to get an equal position, but uh, e6 is quite fine. And now white plays g4, bishop g6, and knight g to e2. The idea here is that white now wants to play h4 followed by knight f4 going up to this bishop on g6. Uh, black needs to take measures very quickly in order for that uh, situation on the king side not to become even worse. So after knight e2, black starts striking the center with c5, white plays h4, and black saves his bishop by playing h5. After knight f4, uh, black does best by simply sacrificing a pawn with bishop h7, giving up this pawn on uh, h5, but in return getting rid of some key central uh, squares in the, um, and as well as pawns. After knight takes h5, c takes d4. White has a couple of options. Let's take a look at them. One is to check immediately, bishop b5 check, knight c6, and only then take the pawn. After that, black develops his pieces with knight e7. And now this is a very complicated position 
which uh, uh, I believe Black can hold and uh, hold his own and get a good game. Uh, one of the most complicated lines begins with Bishop H6. The idea is clearly that after knight takes a pawn takes Bishop White simply mates, but of course, taking is not uh, obligatory in chess. Black would do best to just get rid of the spin with a6, and after a6, bishop takes g7, threatening knight f6 mate, bishop takes g7, knight takes g7, king f8, uh, knight takes e6, f takes e6, queen f4 check, king e8, and after bishop takes knight, knight takes bishop. Actually, black is fine, even though white has, it seems, ample compensation for the pawn but in fact that's not so clear because pretty soon black will develop his forces and has a very good position to fight on so that's one very complicated line just to take a look at uh, so that uh, we know what can happen so after uh, after uh, queen takes d4 knight e7 white's other option is to play bishop g5 uh, and then again, black plays a6, uh, forcing bishop takes knight, knight takes c6, and after queen f4, still attacking the queen, queen a5, um, black uh, is aiming at this pawn on c2, and wants to develop, uh, well, wants to play d4 as well. If white castles away, black simply takes the pawn, bishop takes c2. And after rook a c1 moves the bishop to attack the knight. Uh, knight g3, knight b4, eyeing the d3 square, h5, bishop h7 for now. And after rook fd1, knight d3, rook takes knight, bishop takes rook. Uh, black has once again um, a great position. So um, not so easy for white to simply break through by the power of his uh, break through by the power of his will. Um, the other possibility is uh, to, instead of bishop b5 check, is to take immediately on d4, but after knight c6, if the queen decides to be the one that's pinning the knight, black simply gets rid of the spin by playing a6, and after bishop g5, even a move like b5 is quite good, hitting the queen first, and after queen f4, queen c7, we can see that the e5 pawn is not going to be saved after bishop g2 queen takes pawn and the subsequent exchanges let's say castles um, rook c8 threatening b4 rook hg1 and f6 black once again has a very nice position threatening all kinds of things and um, uh, in general i don't think that this position presents any danger for the second player. Going back to uh, our game, uh, so now we see that knight c3 is not such a dangerous idea after all. Black just needs to sacrifice the pawn on h5 and he'll be fine because he's going to ruin white's center. So anyway, Alexander Morozevich played knight f3 and I played e6 and he just continues development. This was basically Nigel's idea, Nigel Short's idea in this line. The idea was to that white will develop and these pawns will provide a suitable backdrop for the oncoming kingside attack uh, and black's count counterplay on the queen side is not going to be sufficient. Well, let's see. So here I play knight e7. Uh, there are many other playable moves for black in this position, but the main three are, uh, um, I would say knight e7, knight d7, and uh, uh, c5. So knight e7 is one of them, uh, white castles, and I play knight d7. In general, I don't want to uh, play c5 until I'm ready uh, for that break with my uh, developed forces behind it. Knight d7. So white plays knight bd2. This is uh, clearly one of the methods to develop, and I'm sure uh, Alexander Morozevich knows his stuff um, uh, because uh, you know when we played, he was, uh, I think, probably at his peak, about 2800, 
uh, strength. And uh, clearly he was very well versed in openings. But just to show you some other possibilities here, the main idea uh, besides simply developing here for white is to uh, go for the advantage of a knight against the bishop. And this can be done by playing knight h4. Um, so if white plays knight h4, hoping for bishop g6, uh, then uh, white will eventually take the bishop and have a slight edge in uh, so far as white will have a bishop against the knight. And maybe in the, if the position opens up, uh, he will have a good uh, chance to secure a slightly better ending. For example, if black plays bishop g6 now, which I don't advise, then after knight d2, for example, c5, c3, uh, knight c6, attacking the knight, knight takes g6, pawn takes on g6, knight f3, bishop e7, um, bishop e3, rook c8, white will play something like g3, and uh, the plan, white's plan is to expand on the king side by playing h4, king g2, rook h1, then when the knight moves maybe to g5, queen supports the knight on g5, and h5. So this is the long-term plan. And uh, although black has definite resources down the c file and the queen side, um, white's plan is so simple that there's no reason to give him such a simple game. So in my opinion, in this position, after knight h4, black should not play bishop g6, but instead should play um, uh, bishop e4 to force white to uh, uncoordinate his pieces. Let's see uh, how this would go. Um, so after uh, after knight d2 attacking the bishop, black breaks through with c5, and now we have a very interesting and complicated line. So first of all, what happens if white simply takes the bishop? Well, we take it back. Um, and after, now the knight is threatened because the knight can, is actually really threatened because black is threatening knight c6 hitting the knight and then bishop e7 hitting it again. So white actually has to make this prophylactic move g3 at this point. And then um, black attacks the pawn on d4, hoping that white will take on c5. White holds it on, and then we attack again with knight c6. And now we have a, an interesting situation where um, um, either white will play bishop e3 or pawn takes pawn. If white tries to hold the pawn on d4 with bishop e3, then we add some more uh, juice to this d4 situation by attacking with the rook. Now knight takes knight takes e5 is threatened. And you can see that white's really getting out of this with only moves. Queen a4, now bishop e7 hitting the knight. Uh, and white can't really afford to uh, defend the knight because the pawn on b2 is going to go as well. So he has to play rook a b1. Um, and after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, queen b4, black gets a very reasonable ending. Uh, queen takes b4, knight takes b4. Now, of course, the knight has to run. Knight g2, uh, castles, rook c1, knight d5, for example. And um, after knight f4, knight b6, uh, knight d5, knight d5. We can see that black's knight is certainly not worse than any of these bishops. So black should have a fine position here. And uh, if white, a little earlier, uh, decides to take on c5 instead, um, after rook d8, let's take a look. So after rook d8, um, uh, or maybe even a, a, a little earlier here, if white takes on... Uh, okay, so c3, knight c6, yeah, and now... Uh, after pawn takes pawn, this was also played in some games. Um, uh, knight takes c5. Black is already aiming for this d3 square. Let's say b4. And knight d3. Of course, if bishop takes knight, we simply play rook d8. We don't take on d3, God forbid. Um, and so uh, white can play something like bishop e3. 
we hit the pawn on c7. Uh, f4 is a cool move because actually taking en passant would lose our knight. We simply castle the queen side, uh, holding on to our beautiful knight on d3. And uh, uh, after queen a4, a6, b5, knight c5, uh, exchanging here and king h1. Uh, black takes on b5, white takes on e4, and we play uh, g5, uh, hitting this knight, and after takes, queen takes pawn, queen takes queen, knight takes, bishop takes pawn, rook g8. Um, we have full compensation for our pawn, uh, even though this position is very difficult for white to actually achieve, uh, because I'm sure black could play uh, somewhat differently earlier, but the opposite color bishops and the very active positions of our rooks uh, leads me to believe that this position is roughly equal. For example, after knight f3, uh, we don't have to trade, we just play knight g4, and after rook b1, h6 takes, knight takes h6, or even rook h8 to get our uh, rook on the h file, h4, uh, rook takes h six ninety four f five and we can see that all our pieces are dominating and although um white is definitely well it's probably not worse yet it's actually difficult more difficult to play for white here than for black because black is already threatening to win back the material and all the pawns on the colors uh, that uh, black prefers so this line uh although quite forced in nature it just goes to show you that black has ample counterplaying possibilities here um, in the um, after bishop e4 uh, knight uh, d2 c5 uh, now after c5 white can also do something else let's take a look at this other line uh, that i uh, wanted you to uh, to learn um, so besides taking immediately on uh, 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 on e4, white could play appropriation of g3. This one will become useful anyway, and the bishop isn't running anywhere, anywhere. If black takes on d4, white will take both on e4 and d4, and will get a good position. So black needs to protect the d4 pawn first by playing queen b6 here, and then uh, the lines are quite similar here. Um, after g3, queen b6, pawn takes pawn, knight takes c5, uh, knight takes e4. We still take with the d pawn because it's very important to control this knight and not let it return to any good position. Uh, and after bishop e3, we, our knight is coming to d5. Bishop d4, again, key idea, casting queenside here. And uh, again, black uh, has quite a good game. After a3, queen c7, um, stopping b4. Um, Queen c1, getting rid of the annoying uh, skewer on the d-file. Knight e7, the knight repositions himself and hits the bishop. Bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, queen f4. And now, this is very interesting, we hit this, take this moment to take the e-pawn by force. You play g5, queen takes g5, and um, knight c6. And after queen f4, queen takes e5, black has a great position. And in fact, queen takes f7, although looks reasonable, loses by force. After bishop e7, knight g2, rook hf8, um, queen h5, rook f5, queen takes h7, rook h8, queen g6, knight d4 hitting the bishop, rook e1, and finally rook g5, queen f7. Bishop f6. We're slowly trapping the queen, if you didn't notice. Knight e3 and rook g7. And voila, the queen is finally trapped. It's a seven move combination that the engines see much better than humans. But it's clear that uh, taking on a seven looks dangerous. And uh, a strong grandmaster could probably calculate this out even on his own, uh, on his own uh, account. But uh, in any case, this shows you how uh, black can strike back in the Karakhan. If we go back to our key line, we'll see that 
Alexander Morozevich knew something more about this maybe than um, than he showed them. He played knight bd2 instead of playing knight h4, allowing this feisty idea of bishop e4. And um, after knight bd2, um, I played uh, knight g6. Now, uh, besides this, Black has uh, many other ideas, and very recently, uh, a very strong grandmaster played h6 followed by g5 and knight g6 to secure a strong initiative against white and this is al always an interesting plan and take a look at it uh, i'm showing the plan that i used just because uh it's very much in the spirit of the uh of this variation i played knight g6 and uh, uh i'm aiming for a quick f6 uh trying to uh complicate the position and uh, get aggressive against white setup. So I'm not allowing white to simply uh, slowly build up pressure on the king side with g3 and h4 because I want to very quickly strike in the center. Uh, Alexander plays knight b3. And uh, okay, here there are a lot of alternatives to black. I could play h6, h5 for now, just uh, uh, holding off white's king side aggression, but I decided to play f6. Quite dangerous in my opinion um, in terms of opening theory but uh, it will show you the chances uh, and the things to avoid for both sides so up to f6 uh, it's actually very hard to find the best continuation for white especially um, in a blitz game and here uh, white played rook e1 instead um, the most testing continuation here after f6 is to play knight e1, threatening to win this bishop by simply attacking it with the pawns. Uh, and after knight e1, um, if I play h5, uh, white will just take on h5. Um, so, uh, although, although it's not as clear as uh, maybe even after h5, white should just play f4. And, and get a pretty good position. But otherwise, I would have to basically start sacrificing. So after f takes e5, g4, e4, pawn takes bishop, pawn takes pawn. Black seems to have a lot of compensation for the pawn, but actually this would work in a blitz game, but I'm not sure it would work if white is really prepared. After f3, bishop d6, um, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight g2, uh, it's not clear that black has enough uh, for a piece. Uh, although, of course, uh, my next move would be queen c7, hitting the pawn, and then casting away from all this and trying to uh, start a kingside attack with my uh, remaining pieces. Nevertheless, um, white did not play knight e1, which is maybe the strongest move, and played rook e1, allowing me to start playing in the center. I took an e5. Uh, Morozevich recaptured and I played c5. Uh, now the central expansion uh, with these two pawns will account for some of the weaknesses that I have uh, in the position. So we'll see what happens. White plays c4 hitting the pawn on d4, d5. I played d4 and bishop d3. Uh, trying to exchange this sort of glue of my position, the bishop on f5. I have to take, pretty much, and after the exchange, uh, I continue the development with bishop e7. White plays queen e4. And uh, here it was actually possible to uh, to um, sacrifice the pawn and get pretty good play uh, by casting, but instead I decided to protect. So I played rook b8. And... Uh, White plays bishop f4. My, probably not the best move. The best would be to play queen g4, hitting my target. And uh, that likely forced, would force king f7. Uh, in, a way, in a way, I'm all, also trying to uh, castle by hand here. And after, um, for example, king f7, bishop g5, h5, queen g3, 
queen b6, protecting this pawn on b6, knight bd2. Now I can take because I protected the pawn, bishop to hg5, knight to hg5, king g8, f4, rook f8, rook f1, and now my knight returns to a good position. Knight e7, b3, knight f5, um, queen h3, h4, knight e4, rook h7, rook f2. Um, it looks to me like white is actually better. Uh, as his uh, kind of points for an attack, if he can get uh, somehow uh, g4 or g3, g4 in eventually, maybe by moving his queen to d3 first. But uh, looks like actually here white would get quite a good position. But for that, he would have to play this uh, tough move to find queen g4. Instead um, of queen g4, uh, Alexander plays bishop f4, trying to develop his bishop. Uh, I castle and he plays bishop g3. Um, here I decide that it's time to strike on the queen side with b5. Notice that in general my endings should be quite good because I have a protected pass pawn. So I'm trying to get uh, at white's pieces, trying to engage them and hopefully exchange them. b5, knight bd2, and here I played um, a6. Actually, direct play here by pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight b6 would uh, be stronger because after say knight d6, knight d5, um, rook c1, queen b6, b3, uh, and knight f4, my pieces would be very well placed and the knight on d6 uh, would probably have to leave, but then I'm starting to attack these pawns on a2 and uh, later b3. So, uh, Okay, this is it's tough to find all these moves in, in a blitz game, of course. So after uh, after uh, b5 knight d2, I simply played a6, and uh, after b3 rook f5, uh, rook e2, queen a5. Uh, this was actually uh, an attempt to finally tie up the pieces here, and also come into c3 with the queen. White played h4, and I played rook b f8, a very tricky move. First of all, hitting the f4 square, because now I want my knight to go to f4, but also um, I'm luring white to try to win material with queen c6, and uh, Alexander falls for this, uh, I would say, somewhat trivial trap in a blitz game, uh, I mean, in a tournament game, but not so trivial in a blitz game. So he plays queen c6, and I get I hit him with queen b6. All of a sudden, the knight on d7 is poisoned, because after queen takes knight, rook d8 actually wins the queen. And, uh, of course, I want to trade queens, and uh, coming back to e4 will be met by very strongly by knight f4. So white trades, which is exactly what I wanted. Knight takes b6, and plays rook c1. I play knight f4, and white plays rook e4. Um, I think it was actually already time to give up this bishop and take on f4 and just bite the bullet with that. But um, he played rook e4, and now my knight gets to another very strong square, knight d3, and rook b1. And uh, uh, now I played this move h5. Um, Very again, a very tricky blitz move. The idea is that when I attack this rook from the c3 square, the rook will not have the g4 square available. And of course, attacking it is quite possible because I, I can take on c4, and if white doesn't want to trade knights, uh, well, he will take with the b pawn, and then I will uh, enter the c3 square. So this is the reason for the move h5. I could have played directly with bc4. I think black would have an advantage there as well, but I played this move. White played a3. Um, and uh, okay, pawn takes pawn was very strong now. I prepared some more. Played rook e8 to pre prepare the bishop. So when white finally gets to b7, even the bishop isn't attacked. Uh, a bit maybe too much preparation, but maybe in the blitz game it's not bad. King takes f1, pawn takes on c4, pawn takes on c4, knight a4, and suddenly everything is prepared. Rook b7 doesn't attack anything, knight c3 attacks everything. And of course, <clears throat> it's very difficult for white. Uh, he plays king e2. Um, 
and I play knight db2, uh, stopping the knight from uh, the rook from moving, and also, of course, threatening the inevitable knight c3, king f1, rook b8, supporting the knight so I can play knight c3, rook e1, finally the threat comes in, knight c3, and uh, of course the knights are roaming wild, knight d3 is next, picking up the rook, and uh, so Morozevich decides to sacrifice the exchange, plays knight e4, um, knight takes rook, rook takes knight, I pr protect my rook, rook f f8, knight fd2, and simply snatch off this pawn on c4. Another beauty. Continuing the carnage here, rook c1. Okay, here are many ways to win the game. Uh, it's a blitz game and I don't have that much time. We're in the three dozen seconds or so mode now. Uh, knight takes d2, knight takes d2, rook b2, knight d4, and here I'll just give the rest of the moves uh, to... Uh, show you that I indeed did win this game, no matter the strength of my illustrious opponent. Um, bishop d2 and a5 and bishop g5 and just king f7, knight d6, we exchanged here. I stopped this pawn from moving. Rook b1, king d7, bishop f4, king c6, bishop b5, Rook d8, bishop g7, rook d6, okay. Um, I'm not sure if we need to look at the rest of the moves, but basically, um, eventually I won and had still five seconds to spare in this uh, complicated game. But I hope you saw the idea here was that um, I was able to take control of the position the pawn on d4 provided me with a um, anchor to go into end games that were always would always be better for me and when i trapped uh in a way trapped uh, my opponent's queen and forced them to exchange that gave me the huge advantage that you saw uh uh, how I was able to use. Now going forward, the advance ration is a very serious attempt by White to uh, get an advantage for uh, against the Karakhan, and so do follow modern theory in it. Uh, there are games played in almost every tournament uh, with the advance variation, and the games are extremely complicated. I try to shun away from the major lines, and this is what creates problems for my opponents, even or those rated above 2780, I would say, because it's very hard to remember everything. And some of these lines uh, will give you uh, a lot of chances, even if maybe best play will uh, knock you out every so often. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this line is absolutely playable uh, for black. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.